I guess we'll start at the beginning. Hello everyone, my name is Robert Jackson. Some of you may know me as this funny guy, Robert Jackson. All that to be said, today is going to be the very first episode of a brand new series slash podcast that I am venturing out and doing. It's going to be called Being a Dad Without a Dad. So before we jump right into everything, I want to do all the you know, formalities and get those out of the way right away first. Okay. So I want to make sure that you guys like this video. If you were raised without your dad or raised without, you know, two parent household, uh, without proper guardians, or if you just found raising kids on your own, whether they are birth or adopted a little bit more difficult or challenging in different ways that you would find it to be. I want you to go ahead and comment down below a little bit about your story. I would love to hear that. Also on top of that, I would love for you guys to subscribe to my YouTube channel, This Funny Guy. On this channel, we're going to take a little bit of turns. We're going to continue to do our comedy thing, but we're also going to be just diving in a little bit more to get to know me as well. All right. With all that being said, let's start at the beginning. I was born and raised, uh, obviously, by my mom, you know. Um, so, of course, I had a dad. Obviously, that's how children are formulated in this world, right? But I never had a relationship with my dad growing up. He was never inside of my life. Uh, n not to the extent that, you know, uh, like other people would even have a absent father to even know him like that, right? So one of the things is that me growing up, I got to meet some of my family members on my dad's side and they really embraced me as their blood, which I am, right? And it, it really helped me out a whole lot. But not having that father figure of my own growing up inside of my house uh, with my mom, it definitely made things a lot more uh, challenging for me, like other people as well, you know, growing up to actually, you know, have that dad in their life, that person that they can look up to. And that's not even to say, because some people have their dad in their lives, but their relationship are a lot more strained. But I'm just talking about specifically right now about those who do not have the father or a father figure in their lives, period. Uh, for me, I could have went the way of just constantly, you know, going down the path of just saying like, well, my dad wasn't in my life, so I'm just going to be a terrible father and everything. So for me, I wanted to, obviously, when I had kids, I always said it in my mind. I never said this out loud to anyone besides my wife, though, but I always said it to myself inside of my mind, though, that I want to make sure that I can be the dad that I never had. I want to be the dad. I want to be better than the dad that I never had. Let me rephrase that. I'm sorry before someone take that and be like, see, <laughs> but I, I definitely want to be the dad, uh, a better dad than the one I never had. So I really, 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 really found myself making sure that I am a present father. And as we continue to learn and grow, you guys continue to know me a lot more. We'll talk a little bit more about how that actually got me in trouble in my marriage with trying to be just overly trying to be the parent, the, the, the top, top, top parent. And it's like, all right, you know, you have a two parent household. OK, you know, uh, being raised by a single mother, you have that in you where you almost feel like it's an independence. Nest, though, but that's later on down the line. What I want to talk about right now is a very deep subject, first of all, about me becoming a father. Now, I got married when I was 19. That is very young and at a very young, immature stage of my life of getting married uh, to the love of my life. Um, I didn't know how to be a husband and I didn't know how to be a father either. So shortly after we got married, you know, my wife was pregnant with our first son. And in that first pregnancy, man, it was a beautiful thing. You know, it was lovely. You know, have all these plans and you have all these great dreams and things. You're like, oh my gosh, we're going to be doing this with our kid. We're going to be naming them this. And we're going to be going this. We're going to be going here. We're going to be going there. They're going to be doing all these great, cool things. And you have all these thoughts in your mind of what you think that you're going to be doing with your first child. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you already got it planned out. You're, you're building, you know, cribs and got car seats and uh, 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 carriages and all kind of stuff. You're picking out clothes and everything. Um, and it's, and you're writing out names and saying, Oh, it looks great and all that. Right. But you're, you're never prepared for the most devastating thing. Right. See, God gives us air to breathe every day and we wake up and we just be just going on about our day. Like as if, Hey, it's a given that we're going to have this. Uh, and it's not right. And so me, you know, having, 
uh, of my first child, you know, uh, for me, it was really like, wow, okay, um, that can't happen to me. You know, I've had family members inside of my, I had family members, uh, obviously inside of my family, I had family members who have had, you know, tragic things happen to their infants and everything. And I never thought that it would happen to me. Um, and it did. It happened to us. Um, my wife at five months, uh, gave birth to our son very prematurely. Uh, and he was born with a very rare, um, um, you know, diagnosis called Beckman Wiedemann syndrome. Um, and he had a lot of difficulties, you know, he was born and had a lot of different things going on. Uh, and my wife's story is very strong. And one day, hopefully you guys will hear that though, but I'm only going to talk about this side of me though, because I, I don't never want to take that away from her. That's her time to tell her story. But for me at that time, at 20 years old, you know, having uh, a son being born prematurely. And at the time, my wife's grandmother is in the hospital as well. And my wife is going through some health things. And I, we didn't have a car either. Now, people gave me rides back and forth to hospitals, right? But you got one family member in the hospital here. You got another family member in the hospital here. And then you got your wife sick right here. And you're 20 years old without a car. Yeah, people are taking you back and forth places, though, but they can't be there all the time for you, right? And so, what do you do? You're supposed to be a father. This is your opportunity right here that, man, I'm going to be a dad. This is, it's finally happened. I am, it's my calling. I'm, I'm about to be the best dad I ever could be, but I, I, I'm not even a dad. Wow. Did I do something wrong? Is it me? No. God has a reason for everything. And in that moment, though, I could not even bring myself to cry, though, because I felt like I had to keep going. And a lot of times as men, we find ourselves saying that we can't give ourselves time to grieve, to process, to go through things. But it's OK to take a pause and a chill to say, hey, look, you know what? I'm dealing with something. I am not OK right now. Obviously, I learned that 20 plus years later. But, you know, not 20 plus. Jeez, I'm adding years onto my life. Uh, I'm only 34. But, uh, yeah, you know, you know, you, 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 you find that out, you know, later on down the line. You know, you figure it out later on down the line. Uh, but I had to keep going. I had to keep pushing. I was like, okay, well, he's, um, my son is, is, at the time, he's still alive. He was sick, up, hooked up to all these tubes and everything. And my wife, you know, uh, I already had a name for my daughter, so I never had a name for my son. I never, because I was like, if I have a child, it's going to be a daughter, it's going to be a daughter. And I had a son, and I was like, all right, cool, but what are you going to be naming and stuff? And I couldn't think of a name at the time, and my wife, she couldn't think of a name at the time because she's dealing with a lot emotionally and everything. And I was just like, okay, what name could it be? What name could it be? Well, this is a moment right here where I have no one else to call on but God. So Zion, Zion. Zion Jackson, Z-Y-O-N. And our first son passed away two days later uh, due to complication and being born prematurely. Uh, it was a tough time. It was definitely difficult. Um, and everyone, honestly, at that time, again, my wife dealing with her health things and then her grandmother as well, she was bombarded with so many different emotions and everything and it really really put her into a a really really tough spot and for me um i didn't know how to process anything you know i remember everybody was around and they were saying robert it's okay to cry it's okay to cry and i kind of like i forced myself to cry in that moment though but i really didn't even feel myself having the tears to cry at that moment. It's not because I wasn't sad because of my son, but it really was just like, okay, what's next? Because I I thought this was my moment right here. This was This is the moment right here that I'm about to be a father for the first time in my life. Yes. And it disappeared. And I really never got a chance to process that until way later. Eventually, I processed that and got through it. So this is for 
This episode is very short, not as long, but it's you getting to know me first. I know we came out the gate swinging very hard, though, but I want this first episode to be about how I became a father without a father. And this first episode is just simply about how I thought I was going to be a father. How I thought I was going to be a father. And I didn't become one. But it's okay. God still had his plans. And eventually I did become a father of two great, great children, uh, Evan and Dottie. And we'll talk about them on the next episode, starting off with my daughter uh, as well. So, all that being said, if you guys like this podcast, if you like this episode, this long form video of me talking and just giving you guys more realness about me, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, comment down below if you've dealt with some things like that as well, uh, some grief stricken things. I know sometimes it's tough and it's hard, uh, but guess what? You will get through it. Yeah, you just got to hold your head up, you know, and it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to take time to process things too. Man, be transparent and tell people. Be careful who, who you tell, but just tell people, man. Uh, yeah, it's the first episode, so talk to you guys very, very soon.